Hello, and welcome to the Magical Holistic Healing Arts Podcast. I'm Lynn Hicks. I'm Erica Hicks. And we're the mother-daughter duo, curiously investigating the healing and expressive arts, so we may expand our positive direction of our mind, body, and spirit. As always, we're proud distributors of King and Water, the life-changing elixir to our lives. And if you want to join this revolution, drink sacred geometry water, check the links below. On today's episode, we have Dr. Lisa Pomerantz. She is a naturopath, um, and she just really shared some really great um, information on a naturopath. She has shifted that word to the way they used to say it, which is naturopath, and really brought in some good ideas about healing and lifestyle, intuition. Yeah, I love, she uses the word algorithm to describe the Western conventional conventional medicine and doctors, which I thought was a really interesting word, especially since we're in such a technology age and there is, you know, flaws in technology. So it kind of shows that with that term of algorithm that she uses in this episode. Yeah, and I hope that this and all our episodes support that Holistic medicine is dealing with not just the physical body, um, but many aspects. And she just had a real brilliant way to look at this holistic, to look at lifestyle and how to can, you know, pull together all these pieces and empower people on their path to wholeness. Yeah, she is, you know, so much information and is really, really knowledgeable at what she does. And her main goal as a nature path is to help the world And her view is if you help yourself, you are helping the world. So it's such a great episode, such a great conversation about Western versus holistic and just looking at these approaches at a more emotional rather than physical uh, basis. So grab your earbuds, maybe a pen and pencil and enjoy this episode with Dr. Lisa. Today we welcome Dr. Lisa Pomerantz who is a naturopath, and I'm so excited. She's local here to Longmont for her to share her magic. So Dr. Lisa, what is your magical art? My magic is to empower people to create the life that they desire. And that is both on a physical realm and on a mental realm. Because as as a it's either naturopath or naturopath. They're both correct pronunciations. But uh, as a naturopathic doctor, I am always looking for the root cause of disease. And oftentimes that is not just a physical, there's not just a physical root cause. It also lies deeper in the body and rooted in the emotions, which is intricately tied to the physical. But you have to take both into account to do truly holistic wellness. And so that is what I like to offer people so that they not only feel the best that they can in their body, but they also feel as amazing as they can about themselves and their lives. Wow. Mm. What a great answer. (laughs) That's amazing that you do that for people. I mean, it's definitely something that we need more of and that, you know, is becoming more of a focus after this pandemic we've been in um, for over the year. So, uh, so I guess, since everything is kind of virtual too, you're kind of helping the world rather than just locally. Right. Yeah. I mean, I could technically see people worldwide because I sit here in my office. This is how I see all my patients. There's no brick and mortar. Um, but right now I'm, I've been really trying to grow locally in Colorado um, and I'm happy to take it beyond so that I can do the most for many as many people as possible. So I love how you're, you know, I'm a clinical homeopath and so many of the healers, you know, it really is a full body holistic situation. So how do you support, like, how do you get in to find those pieces? Obviously people come with some sort of physical ale, but maybe you could share some of that. Yeah. So it's uh, following the breadcrumbs. So when they first come in, it's like, uh, well, my first appointment is two to three hours long. And it's a lot of digging to find out when it all started, what other symptoms they may be having that are related and they didn't even think of because they just think maybe it's normal to have migraines 
you know, every week for their entire life. Uh, so I do a lot of that detective work and I feel out the emotional state of the body the person has and just kind of follow follow the trail to figure out, okay, is this a lifestyle thing? Do we just need to work at the foundational level and everything should just kind of fall in place? Or is there deeper work we need to do? Do I need to run tests and labs in order to see, is there a hormone imbalance? Is there, I mean, usually there's a gut dysbiosis because I believe in, in the natural world, we think everything starts in the gut. It's our entryway to the outside world. Um, but we can look at stool for that. We can uh, look at um, toxicity. We can look at heavy metal and environmental toxicity. So the dialogue is really the creme de la creme for me because most patients have stories of not being heard by at least one doctor in their life. And I really want to just sit back and let them get everything off their chest because oftentimes patients come in and they tell you exactly what is going on. No, and I like that in the ancient traditions, they do that. And I know in clinical homeopathic medicine, as I learned, and we've had many different doctors that take different directions in the naturopathic world um, with the different ways they can take that medicine and that study. So I like that you're really like listening and um, supporting people to listen to themselves as well, because like you said, you know, a skin rash might be related, but it's something you always had or part of what you normally would do, you know, you would just not consider it part of your head cold or your sinus infection or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I also like to hear that your patients that you're helping right now aren't being heard by the Western side of doctors is like, I mean, we know that it's so fast paced. They see them for two seconds and they leave. And so to have like this option for people to not only dig deeper into their health in a more holistic way, but to actually feel as if it's like a relationship between the doctor and themselves mm. is really beautiful that you're creating that space for your clients. Much of the healing comes from exactly like you said, the relationship, the rapport that you create. Because it's, you know, people think this with their counselor. Well, I have to try out a couple of counselors to see who I feel comfortable with, but they don't often think it with their doctor. They're just, you know, oh, this is my doctor. They take care of my health and doesn't matter if they're a total stick in the mud. But when you have that intimate relationship with them and they trust you and they open up to you, you get that much deeper in healing. And it really makes sense. Like it's true with anything, you know, a relationship really and then you can start to sense what their emotional way that they're addressing things and help them um, participate in the process of healing. It's not just about, oh, here's some remedies. Well, and I think that's what uh, we're kind of getting at too, is that like Western doctors don't, they only hit the physical. They don't hit the emotional. That's why the relationship's not there, that give and take and that conversation so I think, yeah, this field of naturopaths is, should be more, um, like more accepted into our society. It should be more common and it should be more accessible. And it's a broken system that we're in and we're all just trying to navigate and get the medicine to as many people as possible. <laughs> yeah. So um, you might've said this at the beginning of the episode, but what's your definition of a naturopath for our listeners who maybe don't know what that means? Um, you kind of touched on it, I guess, that it's kind of a holistic view, but maybe just um, say it again. <laughs> yeah. There's so many different ways to talk about it. There's ways to, so, you know, you can compare us to conventional doctors. That's one way to really understand how we work. Um, and that is saying that Conventional medicine oftentimes looks at the symptoms that the person presents and they have a prescription that they give. Uh, it's an algorithm. Symptom equals prescription for pretty much everyone. The only thing they change is dosing um, or generic or not. And in, in that system, they're not targeting the root cause. The cause is still going on deep in the body. And so in naturopathic medicine, we conceptualize that as actually pushing the pathology deeper into the body rather than addressing the root cause. And in naturopathic medicine, that's what we do. Try to figure out, okay, you have this pain. 
sure, there's inflammation, but why is there inflammation? I don't want to just give you a supplement to be an anti-inflammatory. I might do that in support of the rest of my treatment, but I want to actually figure out what the causes of the inflammation, remove it or heal it. And then you won't need the supplements to bring down inflammation anymore because there is none. Um, another way that I like to talk about it is talking about the six principles of naturopathic medicine. And so we have first do no harm. That's of course, every doctor conventional or not pledges to that. And then the healing power of nature. And that is so beautiful because it says that our bodies are inherently able to heal themselves. And so putting faith in that ability can be so powerful. We evolved under a certain set of circumstances. And so those circumstances are things like clean water, sunshine, nutritious food. And so when you actually bring these things known as the conditions for health back into a person's life, that healing power of nature is just a natural consequence. Um, the other thing is, uh, treat the cause. I mentioned that a lot, but it goes hand in hand with treat the whole, which is you have to look at the person that is sitting in front of you and not see cardiovascular symptom, high blood pressure. You know, that is just one thing going on with them, but that's why I spend three hours, right? Because I want to know, okay, what else is related to this high blood pressure or, you know, all the, all the body systems are intricately connected and there's no way to separate them out. My favorite of these is docere, which in Latin means doctor as teacher. And it's all about empowering patients to do the work on their own because I'm just here as a guide. I'm not there to do the healing for them, but I want to give them the tools to be able to walk away and heal themselves. And prevention. Prevention is the absolute best medicine. You know, why should we be, you know, having these expensive health insurance claims be used on a preventable chronic disease. And we just took care of ourselves when we were younger. Um, medical bills is the top reason for bankruptcy in this country. And even that's even with insurance. And so to prevent this disease, we are literally creating a much better life for us, not only in our health, but also in finance and, you know, accumulating whatever it is that makes you smile on a deep level. We're not talking superficial levels here. you know. I love that. No, I do too. And I had no idea about bankruptcy in America. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yeah, if you know, it fluctuates here and there, but usually stays up there at the top. And I think right now that's where it's at. Well, and just the level of stress that that creates. You're you're sick, you're paying to get stuff done, and then you know, boom. I know even I was watching the news. Some people from the COVID um, issues, the ridiculous bills that they have. Mm -hmm. um, regarding that and the hospitalizations and stuff and people are bringing attention to it. You know, when you're stressed out about illness and then you bring in finance and Gosh, I mean, it right? all, it's a tower ready to fall. So, yeah. um, and I, I love how you're, you're large in your approach, which I think is what a lot of holistic medicine does, but I do like that um, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, people know their own bodies better than I ever could as their doctor. Mm -hmm. And so for me to sit there and be like, well, I think that you should do this in this test to see if you have such a, what intolerance is going on. If they intimately feel that that's not right for them, well, then they know. And so to empower them to trust their intuition and say to me, well, Dr. Lisa, I was thinking we could try some other plan of action. I'm going to say, wow, you are in touch with your body. Let's definitely listen to what's going on with you. Yeah, and I, I like that because I was just talking to my neighbor the other day and he was like, I'm gonna go to this new Cairo and see what they have to say. And I'm like, well, why aren't you gonna share where your issues are? He's like, well, if they can't figure it out. And I thought, what are you doing letting somebody who's just seen you in the first couple minutes, you know, okay maybe they're good at diagnosing but like part of their information or how they're going to really know you and your ales and from this perspective is to learn like you're saying so i think too we often think oh well they're really good because they could peg it when it's like how smart are you to just go share what you know like you said intimately know your body yeah um and and that's where then they're a guide and they're a trained person in these medicine 
to help you decipher that into something that can be shifted. Sounds like your friend was trying to test that chiropractor. <laughs> but that is, you know, that is part of the difficulty with this medicine because we don't have a paradigm which supports this type of healing. And so many people come into it with distrust and you would then, in that case, taking on those patients, you would have to go through all this work to build up this trust, to educate them on the healing power of nature and their own body before any healing can take place. So if we did have this more common in our system, it would be like people would come in saying, yeah, I know my body can heal itself. Let's do this work. Yeah. So you are helping the collective in shifting the paradigm, I would say, by empowering the people and you know intuition and all these different things so that's so incredible that's definitely magical for sure (laughs) thank you no and i do like it because we do know our bodies and like for us for example um can sometimes have wheat intolerances but how it shows up in her body and my body and my sister's body and my niece's body are all different types of rashes or pimples or whatever, but we're having a similar um, experience with the same kind of thing. So how could you expect someone, I mean, it's just a lot of knowledge to put on somebody to to know about yourself because we are individual. We are coming to, you know, the Dalai Lama says, many people have the same symptoms, but the cause of it is really where you get to the basis of understanding how to support people to heal. Yeah, which is where, you know, conventional medicine gets itself in a sticky place with its algorithms because it sees the symptom and goes, there's only one way to go from here. But it's such a such a more complex conversation when you're actually digging deep into who this person is sitting in front of you that's different than the next person that comes through. Exactly. I love that you're saying algorithm because that's just such a like... Uh, techie word and I think that's where the western medicine has the conventional medicine has turned into is like an AI or for you know just computing that's all it's doing it's not doing the listening the you know all the other steps that you are so yeah and I think doctors would want to it's just the yeah. system isn't the system. set up oh, you know, yeah. because many people go into that and it's just it's kind of crazy because how could with so many people dying of heart disease and they're all eating different and they're living different lifestyles and have different jobs, how can the heart disease just be solved by one answer? Yeah, exactly. The whole insurance paradigm, which just ha- allows you five minutes to see a person, just funnel them through. That's one of the issues. And, you know, you'll hear conversations, especially from functional doctors who are on interviews saying, I went to medical school to help people. And all of a sudden, everything that we were learned, we were taught about the body in our you know, basic biology classes, we're taught to forget when we get to our residency because it's all the pharmaceuticals then. And then when they decide to, you know, if it's someone going down the functional medicine path, they're relearning all these things about the body that they're like, of course, it makes sense that you have to give nutrition because that is the building blocks of our cells. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. And it makes complete sense. I mean, we're just, yeah, it just needs to be shifted. Yeah. And I think also a responsibility that we take. I know most of the people that I work with and even the people we know or interview on these shows, you know, the patient who has responsibility and wants to make the choices and wants to offer up information and really kind of go down this path of learning is a really important part of, it's not like, oh, I'm sick, heal me. Like it's a very victim mentality. Whereas, as you said, empowerment is important. Yeah, yeah. You can't take that victim mentality. Like it's okay if someone is dipping in and out because they're struggling, but to become, to have that attachment to it is when it becomes really difficult to actually do the healing. Because a person ends up subconsciously choosing things that keeps them in that state of dis-ease. So mindset for me is a huge place that I go with people. Because I want to understand what is the story a person is bringing to the table. If they have that victim mentality, is there a way that we could break them free of it? 
What do they want their life to truly be? And how do we get them to realize that they are not this disease? They are not their, even their traumas that has happened them into the past. Because holding on to that literally is an anchor that keeps a person tied to it and they can't break free into their truer self. I love how you just said that because it's almost like, I think at one time medicine and the doctor and the physical body was over here. And now what's been shifting so dramatically is that no, your lifestyle, your physicality, your mental thoughts, your emotional states, if you're in a dangerous situation, if you're eating crappy box food every day, or you're using a microwave, or you're over drinking coffee, or you know, there's so many things to mention, but all those are pieces in holistic health. And we're not just looking at the physical body anymore. I mean, you know, to ask why a person makes health choices that aren't beneficial to them. And it's usually because of it, it is either because they don't have the energy to venture upon that health plan, which, you know, a lot of people, they just, they don't want to deal with getting crazy about making sure they're eating organic or there's no toxins in their water. I can't think about getting a filter system. And, you know, it's just, it's so much because we live in such a draining society. So when a person hasn't developed uh, proper self-care or truly nurtured the love that they have for themselves, they fall into this trap of just taking the easy route, the fast food, um, the, you know, drink whatever's coming out of my faucet. Um, and then, yeah, definitely that self-love piece is such a big thing because when you truly love yourself and the life that you're living, you just want more life. Like that's the secret, like creating a desire in yourself to wanting more vibrancy in your life. And then it's like a magnet. Everything you do gets pulled in that direction. I had that thought today. I was like, oh, it's so amazing taking care of myself. It feels <laughs> so good. Like, and yeah, and then it makes you want to do more and more and more because that's what we want. That's what we're craving in our society is that the feel good chemicals, you know, and you know, that was after a workout and after a shower and after my face massage and things. So um, those and those things stimulate those chemicals in our brains. And it's yeah, it's it can be so simple too. we always talk about that here, how simple things can be. And even though our culture has made it so difficult or yeah, like you said, like extreme and draining, like it, it like the healthy way doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to. And a lot of times, you know, you're, um, you find your community that supports you and it makes it a lot easier. And people may not have the community uh, close by, but I mean, Facebook now, like there's so many Facebook groups where people could hop on and ask a question. How do I, you know, start shopping healthy and people will support you. You know, there's resources out there and it, it just takes that desire. Mm. Yeah. I like how you say that in community too is really important because we're in lots of communities um, and it really helps on all levels, not just your health, but obviously people doing yoga class are in community of each other and support on many levels as our business, as any kind of expansion, like, and people probably don't really consider that part of the healing tool that it is. Yeah. You know, to just go in and out of your yoga class and make it be more of a fitness thing is probably cutting someone, cutting someone's self short rather than really seeing this community for what it is and trying to dive in a little bit more and asking people what they're doing for themselves. But we've all been so cut off and, you know, I, I, I've heard something years ago about uh, some study that said that kids these days, when they're using so much technology in front of their faces all the time, aren't able to recognize the facial cues of emotion as well anymore. And so if things like that are happening, people literally are like, they don't know how to interact in community and have those heartfelt interactions because everything is just so techy. <laughs> yes, 
screen based, just like a screen, <laughs> even in the right. real world, it just translates. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> well, oh my gosh. there's so much really to think about that goes into healing. And I think part of why we do our show and love to have so many different people on is because it's really lifestyle and it's mm -hmm. really many pieces that, you know, when we're ill, we're just out of balance in one particular area, perhaps that when we have someone like you to come in and focus and support us to focus that because we don't have the intelligence of what your study is and what you, you know, you as a doctor can offer, but it's really just trying to cue into a certain area. And like you said, in the very beginning, a lot of ideas when you get your sunlight, good food and all that, it might just balance out and that these are possibilities. Like it's not about I'm sick, I need a doctor, I need a drug and now I'm gonna be better, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, this is one of the reasons, too, why I always say that it's so important to get a health team on board because of that support, that community. And, you know, when someone is struggling in their health, physical or mental health, to be doing it completely on your own really can be so overwhelming. And a lot of people are trying to do it on their own, especially in the mental health world. And so finding those people that you can really rely on to be your guides, to help you be, to be healers for you, but also help you to become your own healer is so important in someone's journey. Yeah. Yeah. And I love like on top of all this, like the lifestyle, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Like that kind of just like clicked for me because mm -hmm. On my blog, I was talking about like these seven bottles that you will align and ground yourself every day. And it honestly is just a lifestyle. Like, yeah. yeah, if you do these seven things every day, you are going to feel better. And that's what, that's all it is. I mean, even like diet or nutrition can get cut out of the vocabulary because if you're living in a conscious life, then it is. It's just conscious living. It's not a diet. It's not, oh, this or that. And you can still have that piece of cake every once in a while and re not reward yourself, but, you know, consciously eat that. Yeah, eat that, that meal for yourself to enjoy it in pleasure or, and to enjoy it for your cousin's birthday party or whatever it is. Like, yeah, that just like really clicked for me. It's all about intention. Exactly. You know, when intention becomes, I, I'm doing this because I'm really emotional right now. And that's why you're eating the cake and maybe the whole cake. <laughs> that's where, you know, we're supporting our unhealthy habits. But when you're right, you're living this healthy lifestyle and every, every healthy habit you have is supporting one another, then yeah. If you're at a wedding, then go for it, you know, indulge a little because you're doing it out of joy. And when you're doing it out of joy, we're actually able to digest this food better because when we're in an activated state, because we're feeling guilty or shameful about the food that we're eating or we're stress eating. Um, so it's not even the shame piece. We're just thinking, well, things that make us, makes us unhappy, our digestion isn't properly working. And so that is going to lead to the inflammation that is going to lead to the leaky gut versus if you're like, this cake makes me feel awesome right now because I'm dancing with my loved ones at this party and I haven't had cake in a while and it's a treat and all smiles doing it. Your gut says, yeah, let's rock this cake. <laughs> well, I think that's important. Like you said in the beginning, the mental like how you approach anything is really going to shift the outcome on physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. And really like that was the perfect example of the cake um, and things that, you know, as you're eating something in joy and pleasure, it's a lot different experience than when you're gobbling something in depression, sadness, and fear. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a branch of guiding people through eating disorders now it's called intuitive eating and i think it's really wise because it gets people in touch with their body and allows them to say do i really want this food right now and it's not about like what is good or bad food it's just the process of bringing someone into their body when they may have been disembodied because they might have body dysphoria dysphoria or they might just be full of shame um, or just decided to leave their body so they don't have to deal with it or life. 
And so to be able to have that intuition practice brought back in and say, do I want fast food right now? Okay. I genuinely do. At least it's starting the process of listening to yourself rather than forcing yourself into a certain box. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that word too, the intuitive eating and um, you just, you just know so much, Dr. Lisa, like, I feel like a naturopath has to have like so many hats too, at the same time, many hats and running a business includes many more hats. So I've been trying to imagine myself as becoming an expert juggler. <laughs> I think going back to that intuitive eating, I really think like, it, and, and even all this medicine and the, the path you're on is really supporting people to kind of tune into themselves. And once you start doing that, whether it's with food or anything, it's just going to roll into all the other areas of your life, bringing us back yeah. to the, and, and that's really important because the intuition knows, there's a part of us that knows beyond our mind, body and emotions, how to survive. Mm-hmm. Um, and our innate health system is really wanting us to survive. So giving yeah. people tools to connect all that together And perhaps that healing crisis, as we call them, is a way for them to step into a greater knowing of themselves. Definitely. I mean, those hardships that we go through, they are really divine. And uh, I've been listening to, uh, I think his name is Rick Roll podcast. And his wife calls them divine moments because we are struggling. But in that struggle, we are growing and learning ourselves and if we are not having those opportunities uh, um, it's the hormetic effect have you heard this term and it goes on all time in our bodies and in our lives when there is some sort of resistance it's like weight training is the perfect example when there's a resistance we then have to have equal resistance back which develops which is our development and our growth and so without that it's stagnation is is the other side of the coin. Well, and I like that because I think in somewhere in all of our heads, we think there's this utopia landing spot. Right. And even though we're told it a million times, it's like, when I get this, I'll be happy. When I get this, I'll be healthy. If I get this, I'll be that. And really it's all one big process. And, and perhaps as we grow and develop with different medicines and using all medicine options, we start to realize like, it's not bad when you get off balance because it's like you're saying, a resistance to show you where to fine tune yourself rather than thinking I'm good or bad or, you know, no, life is a process and we go in highs and lows and good and tough and stuff comes at us. We're not creating our own mess all the time. We're involved in groups and situations and things that are happening and we're just trying to respond on a way that's gonna make us feel you know, better. And if we don't respond, right, it doesn't mean we're wrong. It means we're overwhelmed and that's where we need some balance. And like you're saying that resistance is building us and creating our evolution into really being better at this whole process. Yeah. And, you know, everyone, uh, many people talk about a gratitude practice and I think it, it gets a lot of fluff, but it really is this beautiful experience of being thankful for those difficulties to make us more whole. And, you know, in a sense, it's stronger, but it's really, it's not even a strength when you get there because there's this ease of being when you come into a place where hardships is another opportunity. And it doesn't mean that the hardship is easy, but it means that we're not fighting ourselves in a diff- in addition to the difficult experience on the uh, outside. Yes. That's a, some really nice perspectives that you're bringing to just the whole concept of healing and doctors and stuff. I, yeah, I'm really appreciating. Yeah. So where can people find you, Dr. Lisa? Uh, they can find me at uh, my website. It's www.rooted naturopathy.com and that's rooted like a tree um and yeah that's the best way to learn more about me um they can schedule can they schedule like a free call or uh, yeah yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. So on there, I have a um, book of free session with me. It's 15 minutes um, of just chatting with me to see if we vibe, if we have that relationship that we can develop. Um, and so, yeah, I offer that for everybody. And um, you can call me too. And my phone number is 720-790-3393. And I'm happy to book that free consult over the phone. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Well, it's so fun having you on our show. And before we end the episode, we'd love to ask our interviewers, do you have any last golden nuggets for everyone? My intention through healing one person at a time is to create a... Uh, a more whole world at large. And so just really valuing your own individual healing journey. And if there's something you see in the world that you don't like, know that your healing journey is healing the world as well. Oh, that's beautiful. And we really appreciate this great little nuggets of wisdom from today. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Lisa. Thanks for having me. <laughs> The episode isn't quite over yet, listeners. Or YouTubers. If you haven't given us a like, subscribed, left us a review, or commented on any platform, we would really appreciate you showing us some love here at the Magical Holistic Healing Arts. And remember, hang in water and our grab bag for the podcast. Thanks so much for listening, and stay vibrant out there.